Hi, I'm Mike John Merrill from Xeris, and we're here at our corporate offices. We do a lot of things different here in our corporate offices. We actually do a lot of our development and manufacturing here. And as you can see, as we're going to be looking around here, we have various screen rooms set up where we do a lot of the testing within these environments. The screen rooms will help block out a lot of the RF so that as we do test, we can get a pure signal uh, with the various equipment that we're using. Fantastic. So what's next on the tour? So if you look back here, you can see some of the screen rooms. Uh, we do a lot of the test beds here. Um, and that's really about it. Uh, we're going to go. Okay. We're going to go check out this wall of wonder, and I'll explain what we do over there. Okay. Great. So is it really called the Wall of Wonder? Yeah, so we call this the Wall of Wonder, or WOW. What we do is we take our arrays and we actually put them on this Wall of Wonder, and we're able to do all of our testing through here. A lot of people, and we do as well, use uh, various things from like um, uh, ICSI and whatnot to, to do testing of, of multiple access points, radios, clients. We use the Wall of Wonder to actually test everything live, so we can mount uh, several dozen of these Wi-Fi arrays on here and do an actual test uh, to show what's going on with the code and do our development work from here. So how's the 802.11n development uh, been going and, and what's the status? It's going great. It's going fantastic. Uh, we've got our fours and uh, four radio versions as well as our eight radio versions out today. Our 12s and 16s are coming out right now. In fact, uh, we're the Wi-Fi provider for InterruptNet and we'll be showcasing both our 12 and our 16 at the show. Uh, we're up at Hot Stage right now doing all the development work, work with that team at the NOC, and uh, we'll be showcasing uh, all of our arrays at that point. So everything's going great. We have uh, a couple hundred deployments, uh, customers lined up already where they are using our 11-in products, and we have uh, several thousands of 11-in radios out there. That's great. I noticed you've been doing a lot of uh, work in schools. That seems to be a hot market, right? Well, schools are, I think, are the first adopters for 11N. Uh, enterprise definitely will take a little bit of time to, to adopt the standard. Uh, but enterprise, uh, or I should say education, as well as uh, the, the university level and the K-12 through are adopting it at very fast speeds. They don't want to go with the legacy ABGs or going with the Ns, and we're doing very well there, both here in the U.S. as well as in Australia and overseas in Europe. I think, I would imagine hospitals would eventually get on the end band, bandwagon, right? Yeah, in Europe, uh, especially in the UK, they're definitely on the bandwagon. So any new deployment that a hospital does in Europe is 11 in. And we have several like uh, Alder Hay, also uh, Liverpool Women's Hospital, as they're the, the trumpeted uh, hospitals for the NHS over there. Here in the States, it seems to be more of the smaller hospitals, uh, community centers, um, convalescent homes, they're the ones that are adopting it first. Major hospitals will slowly develop it as we go forward now. Fantastic. Would you mind just giving us a, a 30 second overview of just how the company started? Just what you discussed with us a little bit earlier? Yeah, so um, let me shut this door. Sure. <laughs> so uh, our uh, Xeris' backgrounds actually come from two major companies, uh, Zircom, and Zircom was uh, developed back in the late 80s, and they were the first ones to connect the mobile computer to the Ethernet LAN through a parallel port on the back, and that was founded by Dirk Gates and Kirk Matthews. That was one of the early customers. That was one of the, the, yeah, and so uh, that company basically was in existence until 2001 when Intel purchased it, and uh, Intel purchased Zircom, and Dirk Gates basically worked at Intel for a little period of time, helping out their various uh, uh, venture capitalist companies and things that they were working with, and that's when he was looking at what was coming out on the Wi-Fi application side through Intel and realized that all these apps and devices are great, but unfortunately there was nobody there supplying the Wi-Fi infrastructure needed to support all these applications. Uh, he saw the limitations, the bottlenecks that were created by a thin access point into the controller that like aerospace had come out, um, airspace had come out with. And so he decided to look at the cellular market and see how they were managing all their bandwidth. And that's where he came up with the Wi-Fi array where you have various radios in a circular pattern uh, we do up to about 24, Sorry. and in that, um, you've got all the bandwidth and the density needed to support a large area. So one of our devices will basically replace up to, I've seen up to eight 
access points along with that controller that's tied back into the closet. So you really have a high Wi-Fi, high capacity, high density solution that can be deployed very quickly and at a low cost. So this allows corporations to get rid of their wires, more or less, right? Yeah, this is the what we believe is the only Wi-Fi infrastructure that will actually replace the uh, wired Ethernet to the desktop. Um, like with a Wi-Fi controller, the encryption doesn't occur until you get to that controller. With our device, it actually happens at the source, at the edge of the network, and everything is encrypted, all the QoS is in place, so that it just continues on through the wired side. And you've got the density needed for future apps like voice and video, et cetera. Yeah, I mean, for example, uh, one of our devices will cover three to four classrooms of 30 students each in the education market. Uh, we've had educators uh, take these things and walk around with a, a Wi-Fi client and do video streaming hands-on all the way through the, the schools, and it works flawlessly. Um, and like Interop in Las Vegas, uh, we deployed about 16 of our devices for the entire million square feet for, gosh, I think it was like 15, 18,000 attendees, while previous companies have used anywhere upward of 150 access points tied to multiple controllers. So it's a much cleaner solution when you're talking, especially when you're talking high density, uh, talking high Wi-Fi bandwidth, that type of thing. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your time. You're welcome.